Jackie with Encore Real Estate, your local realtors, also known as your contract specialists, snack providers, Uber drivers, and most importantly, emergency TP girls. Oh, We've no. all been there in that vacant house, right? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> we all have TP in our cars. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Realtor secret. <laughs> Video two? Video two. So this is uh, video two in our uh, Home Buying 101 series, also known as the house hunt. Oh, best one. It is the best one. So you're probably all excited when you're at this phase because you are now house shopping. So I always suggest to my buyers to generate a list of everything you want in your dream home. So they'll come back and they'll have, this is, a, this is what I want in my house. And, you know, I'll take this list and then... I'm going to have a nice, you know, little reality checks conversation with them because this, if you can find everything on your, this piece of paper in your dream house, congratulations. You'd be the first person I've met on the planet to find everything that they wanted in a house, unless you were a billionaire, of course. It doesn't really matter the budget. It's all things that, um, you know, people want and everyone has to make a compromise at some point. Do you realize that? So if I was a you know, let's role play for a minute. And if I was a buyer and I presented this list to my realtor, Sarah, Sarah's gonna tell me to do what? I'm gonna tell you to take a look at that list and figure out what are your must-haves. I want you to circle your must-haves and then I want you to underline your wants. Because understand, nobody gets everything that they want in a house. Everybody has to make some type of compromise. And I'm gonna give you a little example that both Jackie and I can relate to. So when I was house hunting for our house, Number one on my must have was a pool. You wanna know what I bought? A house without a pool. But you wanna know what the house that I bought did. It had a beautiful backyard with room for a pool. So when you're thinking about your must haves and your wants, think about changing that up a little bit. And when you're looking at a house, ask yourself, can I make this house have my must have with a few modifications or maybe adding something or changing something. Maybe I need to make a fourth bedroom into an office or, or something like that. So that's something to really think about if the, the house that you're looking at can make a few changes and have all of your must-haves. Right, my example of the pool was it was number one on my list when I moved down here from New Jersey. But the house that we were, my husband and I were gonna put an offer on first, it was so cheap that we could pay for a pool at the time to be installed and still be under budget of what we wanted to spend. So the pool we wanted, the, ha the house that we wanted did not have a pool at first either. So do you s we recommend circling what you need and underlining what you want. And as to square footage, Sarah, what do we recommend? So what I tell people is take a look at the house that you're in now or space you're in now, apartment, whatever it is, and see how many square feet it is. If that house is 1,600 square feet and the purpose of you moving is because you need more space, we don't want to look at houses that have 1,600 square feet because what you have is not enough space for you right now. Maybe we just need a little bit more space. Maybe we need 1,800 and the space to be laid out a little bit differently. But the house you're in right now is, is a good judge. What do you love about the house you're in right now? What do you hate about the house that you're in right now? So that we can make those modifications for your next move. Absolutely. And then moving on into where to find the homes. Perfect. Right? So we've narrowed down your criteria. The first thing that Jackie and I are going to do is we're going to go set you up on a search from our local MLS based on the criteria that you gave us. That's going to start sending you homes, hopefully, that, that meet all of your criteria. So if we're only looking for 1,600 square feet, it's not going to send you a home that's 1,599 square feet, for instance. Now, it's become increasingly important, especially in the market that we're in, that you have some other apps out there. Let's face it, most people do already. Yeah. If you've been thinking about buying a house, I'm gonna almost guarantee you've got Realtor or Zillow on your phone. <laughs> Understand those apps are a great resource. Some of them have a little bit more factual information than the others. Zillow, for instance, we have had some issues in the past where they don't necessarily have the most up-to-date information. Realtor.com is the one that we typically recommend. But it is really important that in addition to our search guys, that you have one of those set up as well. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who finds the home, right? It's all who finds it. We're in the digital information age. It's not, you know, 15 years ago when the realtor had to send you all the houses. We are gonna send you some stuff, but it's okay for you to send us stuff too. Cause I don't really care whether you find it or I find it, it's more about finding the right one. And a perfect example is Volusia County and Daytona. Daytona is more of a, you know, a tourist location for the United States. So 
Um, a lot of the realtors in Daytona that are sell, you know, listing a Daytona home will put it in the Daytona MLS. But I would say four out of 10 homes that are going on the MLS, the realtors are not from Daytona. So they're gonna list it out of their MLS, for example, out in Orlando. So if I was sending you homes in the MLS, you're not gonna get those four other homes that are not in my database. However, you will get them on a Zillow or a realtor.com. So it is important for us to both be looking at, you know, potential homes that you are yeah, interested it's in. It's important to have that third party with you too. So Jackie, once we found a home we want to put an offer in, what's another thing that we check for? Okay. So let's just say you're wagging your tail, you found a nice house and you real and you went and you looked at it with your realtor and you know, you're, you're contemplating on, do I put an offer in, do I put an offer in? There's something else that you can ask your realtor to find out for you. And you can ask your realtor if the house has a seller's property disclosure. So your realtor will then go online and it'll either be on their, you know, in their database MLS that realtors have access to, or they could call the listing agent and ask if there's a seller's property disclosure. That is a document typically about four pages long that is where the seller fills out information that they know about the house. For instance, how old is the HVAC and is there, is, has the roof ever leaked? Um, has it ever flooded, if the house flooded? These are questions that the seller can either check off yes, no, or I don't know. So that is a good document you would want to review before you would officially put an offer in if there was a seller's property disclosure. Sometimes the seller has not lived in the house, like it's just an investor who flipped a house and they've never spent a day in the house, then there would be no seller's disclosure, typically. Yeah. So last but not least, we want to go over a couple rules for the road, both to protect us as realtors and so we can represent you as a buyer and also to help protect you. So. The first one, if you guys want to go to an open house, that's completely okay. Just please let the realtor that's hosting the open house know that you're working with us. And then if you want to schedule a separate viewing, we can do that for you. Absolutely. Number two, we're going to talk model homes because if you're in Florida, you know that we have a lot of them. If you guys want to go visit model homes, please do us a favor and let us know which ones you'd like to go visit. Ideally, we will accompany you to the first time that you visit it. Because if you go in there and you register with that builder and you don't identify that we're representing you, a lot of times the builder will not let us represent you in that transaction. And understand that those are builder's contracts. And if you don't have a realtor representing you on the buy side, then you've really got nobody looking out for your best interest. And we can get around that. A lot of times we can call and schedule an appointment or we can send another one of our people to be there. Um, but do please understand that, that there, there is a process for that and not all builders will recognize us as your buyer's agent if we're not present with you um, when you go to view it. So meaning don't just roll up into an ICI model home and say, hey, because, and then you want to put an offer in it. They're, who, you picked us to be your realtor because you trust us and you want us, you depend on us to help you. When you do that without us, you've you've kind of forfeit us representing you and yeah. yeah do you trust the person that you just walked in on the model yeah they work for the builder not for you keep that in mind mm. so next to last if you are driving around and you just happen to see a yard sign in a house you've looked you can't find it anywhere who do you call you call jackie or, or you call your local realtor don't call the number on the sign if you call the number on the sign then that's going to be the agent most likely representing the house not representing us so they are gonna you know be trying to angle to try and get them as a customer for you we've been loyal to you all we ask is that you're loyal to us too and we're happy to answer any questions for you about that house snap a picture of the sign address where you're at shoot us a text hey what's going on with this house and we'll be sure to get back to you with some information right. so many people call the sign they do they, they do and it's just a matter of understanding that's why we're doing this video so that you guys can kind of understand the rules of the road to protect both you and us and the tips and tricks, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, last but not least, and I cannot tell you how important this one is. When we're looking at houses, understand most people nowadays, Jackie, have some type of ring doorbell, <laughs> video surveillance, furbo. You walk in and you fall in love, please do not scream, I love this house. <laughs> you wanna know why? Because if that seller watches that and now we go to present our offer to Mr. Seller, you think we have a renegotiator? <laughs> 
No. They already know you love it. <laughs> it's like playing in a poker game with your cards on the table. Right? Or the opposite, Sarah. And they have the surveillance going on and you walk in and you're like, oh my God. And you make fun of the house. But yet at some point you're like, well, I could fix it up. And then you put an offer on it. Do you think they're going to accept your offer? When you just bash their house and think about that. So always keep your comments and save them for the driveway or street. Yes, and we're outside of any hearing range of any <laughs> possible video surveillance. I've seen it all. I've seen cell phones laying on the counter and you know they're listening to you. Like, ideally they should disclose that, but in today's world, I just tell everybody, please assume you're being recorded because, right. or, or they're listening at the very least. So those are our tips, tricks, secrets, for you for the house hunting process. And if you have any questions, please give us a call about a specific need. Sarah and I are always willing to help you. Yep. All right. On to the next.